Hello, my name is Joel of Mission Gray Studios, and today we're looking at caustics in 3D Studio Max. Caustics are, I'll show you an example, what happens when light travels through a liquid or refracts off an object and magnifies the light spectrum. This is a good example right here. And to create those in 3D Studio Max, it's a combination of mental ray and setting up some parameters in some of the lighting and rendering settings. So first thing we'll do is start out and build our stage to set everything up. So go ahead and create a box. So at the top I'm gonna make it 300 by 300 by 150. Go ahead and go to the modify panel and add the Turbo Smooth modifier. Make that up to about four alliterations. Yeah, four should be good. And add a few more length segments. I'm going to go three, three, and actually make that. Z brings your view to everything to full. So it looks. pretty good. What we're trying to do here is actually create like a smooth rounded edges around here so that when you when you put an object about right here the light rolls nicely off this. So go ahead and select the object again and add a mod another modifier called normal does, you see it goes black, so now the actual interior of this is showing the inside. So I'm actually going to go here and do render items and actually brings to 5. So when it renders, a little higher quality. We'll go to here, tab, cameras, target camera, and camera here. And I, I tend to like to move this right to the middle of the scene. I'm going to right click that and do free selection just so it's a little easier to grab stuff like the camera. Let's bring this to 0, 2 and H them to pull up the selection dialog camera target and bring this to 0, 2. Grab the camera again. And bring this back. Make use of all your different camera ports so you can kind of get an idea of what you're doing. Right here. There we go. Now, now that we've created our scene or our stage, just put our object, we're going to go ahead to the Create advanced or extended primitives to the torus knot. The reason to use this is just because it creates some very nice caustics very easily. There. Modify panel again. Make this about an 8. It's about a 2, 3. There you go. Go pull this up so that it's just above the ground. Let's zoom in here. There we go. And if we render this, you'll see that all we get is a little bit of light glossiness at the back and then with the standard max lights. So we'll create a do good at that, just so you can use your reference for later on. And we're going to go up here to lights, photometric lights. You can use, oh yes, on when it says uh, turn this on, say yes. Go ahead and create the target light. Now 
raise this up. If you run this again, you'll see that all we did was kind of modify some stuff here. Make another duplicate of this. We'll go to the, just so you guys can see reference to what how things are changing. We go here and go to shadows, mental ray shadow map. We'll actually go to our renderer, sign render, and select mental ray. The other thing you do is under indirect illumination, go ahead and turn on final gathering, bring it to low. Um, diffuse bounces, you can bring that up to about four to start out with. Enable caustics. And I'm going to add the zero to that and make this a one. And this lumber is actually very important later on. This is how much, how sharp the lights are. Gonna be so we're gonna go ahead and that was done with there. And on our object, we go to mental ray shadow map. Create this up to about 2,000 for now. This is really will increase the clearness of any shadows for our object. Next step, right click on our object, select object properties. Under mental rate, choose generic caustics. Select our light. And do the same thing. Yes. So what we told 3D Studio Max is that we want to have objects that have transparency to them, create them, and receive the caustics. We can actually do something out here as well. Let's see other properties. Sorry, time to freeze all. Give a bit of pain there, just like that. Object properties, get our caustics as well. And we can freeze selection again. Okay, now we have to go to the material editor. Now, if you never worked with the slate material editor, and it can be very daunting, you can go from this view to this. Um, I've been recently learning it myself, but I found that it's a very nice way to work. So you get your, all your materials here, and we're actually going to go here and pull the arch and design here. And you can actually do it in different ways as well as right clicking and pulling the maps up. So pull this up, pull this into like the stage area. So if you want to see what things look like, I double click on that, and then you double click on the top there and pull this over here. And that on so you get all our important stuff there. We're gonna go ahead and go down to glass physical. We'll switch the color to let's say nice little green green color. If you hold your mouse over here this shows we're gonna do diamond 2.24. 2.42, sorry. Slight dyslexic moment there. There we go. Then, bring this diffuse level up a little bit. That will actually give us the color. Under special effects, go ahead and do ambient inclusion. Make that off. Get the settings here. Cool. So go ahead and select the torch knot, which you can call object, and have this selected, and click the sign material selection. Hit them again. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and render that. Now we start doing these kind of effects, rendering them might take a lot longer time. So be prepared for that. I'll pause this. 
just finished the render. And as you can see, here's what the final looks like. As you can see, there's some light traveling through and creating those caustics. You can see if you like the original the difference, and a little farther in as well. Now, the next step is always refining any of this type of stuff. Um, the biggest refining places are going to be you can tweak with the material, or if you go into your renderer, oops, renderer, the biggest ones are going to be a combination of your final gathering, which will just create light. What pretty much what that is is how how it reacts to the light bouncing off like this wall over here or anywhere in the entire scene. We're going to increase that to high. Increase the diffuse bounces to about seven. Um, as you hold your mouse, you can kind of see, it gives you an idea of what the, what, how it's working. Go down to this caustic section. A little far down, and we we'll make this actually a five. I'll generate we'll click the checkbox there. Processing, rendering, let's rendering. Um, I think it's pretty good here. Comment. Let's clear this a little bit. That's actually a good size for now. Duplicate that one so you can actually see that for later on. And then we'll go to our light. I'm actually going to crank the, vault, the temperature up on this a little bit to about 2000. Make this up 5,000 for the map, make it a little, little higher quality. And at zero here, make it a little better sample range. Enable the shadows. Fast effects. Don't know if not those yet. Until right resolution. We're going to actually increase the energy to a five here. This will really make those pop. And Anything else in here? No, that looks pretty good. But here, actually, going to save this. Make sure you save. Um, one. So they for your render, because sometimes uh, when you start doing these large numbers of things, it can really cause your computer to crash or slow down. Um, we can up to use a few. Increase the interlace a little bit. Increase the bring this stuff up to a little higher quality renders. This is more like near a final render, and I can actually going to actually go in here, the rendering, oops, got our common, selecting the HD video and make it 720, 720p output. Save it one more time and render that. Now to pause this animation while it's rendering. Um, be prepared for quite long renders when you start doing this type of um, high quality work. And here we go, here's our final render. Um, I took about an hour and 10 minutes to render this. To this uh, 12 8 by 720. You see a nice lighting, light refract or refracting through the glass. And there's a few little areas I probably want to re render for this reason. You click right here, we have some edges. And I believe that's due to the torus just needing more smoothing on it. Probably should run like a turbo smooth. Maybe if I'm with alliterations, that probably would get rid of that issue. Be very careful with these numbers. Don't have to put anything above high priorities. There we go. Keep this down under one, actually. I'm going to put this like four. This is nice. What this does is this allows you to kind of view how smooth it's going to get. This is what it renders at. And this allows you to crank this up without crashing your computer when you're trying to move stuff around. So, oops. Let's 
earlier one. But yeah, that was our final. Um, other stuff you can do is you can add a material. Right now we just have this stock material on the background right now. You can add a material of that. Um, some of the other settings that we were looking at was the, the photometric light. You can crank up. You want even more. You can crank up um, some multipliers. Play with those. And that's about it. Thank you for checking us out, and you have a good day.